We're back at Exponential 2024, and I'm really happy to here have with me Adam Bilmis from Inspire Flight, who is the co-founder and really in charge of a lot of the very great things that we're seeing on here with all the new products that we got coming out here. So Adam, thanks again very much for yeah. doing this interview with us. And what do you think of the show so far? I mean, I've been coming into Exponential for, I think this is my sixth or seventh year, and it's incredible to see just, one, a lot of consolidation in the industry, but also a lot of stableness, it seems, in the industry. A lot of players yeah. that I've seen before and kind of a lot more maturity of the products that are here than I think I'm used to seeing at Exponential. So, yeah. they're really impressed so far. Right. Well. You know, we had our drone demo day in Pittsburgh. You mm -hmm. guys came out to us. It was great. It was very successful. And now I'm very happy to say that we have finally gotten our own demo unit so that we can, we're very excited to go ahead and put this through a very comprehensive review video and really happy to start selling this because this is really going to give us a very this something a product that is going to be very needed in the industry right now you know we're very very picky on who we collaborate with because the aircraft has to be stable and it has to fly great and the sensors has to be good and this really meets this completely so talk to me about walk me through how this developed sure yeah so i mean from day one of deciding that we wanted to come out with kind of a mid-lift uh, product in the market to full on release was about 18 months. Yeah. So a really proud moment for Inspired Flight in March where we started shipping kind of a fairly decent quantity of production units, getting it out to dealers like yourselves and really start to introduce to the market the new IF-800 Tomcat. Um, I think for us when we ideated the product and kind of focused on, got to the core question of what do we really want to, why are we doing this? Why are we building the what became the IF-800 Tomcat? For us, the answer really boiled out to safety and reliability, as you said, stableness. That's always the most important thing for Inspired Flight as an aircraft manufacturer. But more, I think, coming along right, right alongside with that is a real focus on the standard integrations that we can bring to the market. So we've launched four fully integrated camera sensor solutions with the IV-800 that really, I think, cover 80 to 90 percent of the drone applications that you would want to do. Uh, like what we're showing here um, on the aircraft right now is the Gremzy VO. Yep. So really powerful EOIR solution, uh, 30x optical zoom, 240 combined, yes. uh, 640 FLIR uh, radiometric sen uh, IR, laser rangefinder. Yeah. So really powerful sensor there. We've got a Sentara 65R, so 65 megapixel global shutter, multi-spectral options, the new Sony LR1, all interchangeable and field swappable on the platform. So our goal is really just to bring to market a multi-purpose um, aircraft that can cover a number of applications, but at the crux of it, really delivering an optimal user experience where your geotag information is automatically injected. You're really solving the customer's problem in the field, which is how do I, get my hands on a tool, an American NDA yeah. compliant Blue UAS certified tool that I can actually go solve problems with, make money, reduce risk, and complete my job effectively with. Right. And, you know, this isn't just a solution for public safety. There's so many different uh, verticals, such as utilities and Absolutely. energy infrastructure that are going to fit this bill right now mm -hmm. that, you know, the industry has been sorely needing yeah. in the industry and you know so for those of you i'll give you a little bit of glimpse a shot where you know what we're going to talk about is that you know this is a two puck antenna and system rtk system inside here and that's really really important because that's going to give us electromagnetic protection for near high kv power lines and that's going to be a really uh, big market in there Absolutely. I mean, we've been doing a lot of work with utilities with the IF-1200A over the years for things like LIDAR, right-of-way inspections. Yeah. Um, and now with the IF-800, getting a kind of a cleaner, clearer focus on transmission and distribution inspections, smaller LIDARs, um, now that, that technology has really become more cost-effective and started to miniaturize. Right. Um, that market is really, really exciting to us, especially because um, they're a lot of utilities across the country, the publicly owned utilities, are absolutely looking to kind of get away from some Chinese hardware. And there's been a massive void in the market for a mid-lift American NDA compliant solution. Yeah, and you uh, talk about the PPK solution 
or compatibility that you're going to have with this? Yeah, so that's a, that, admittedly, that product isn't launched yet. We're looking yeah. to about the end of the quarter to launch kind of a full RTK PPK solution. And that comes in twofold. Of course, kind of the, the initial um, more, I don't want to say basic, but the initial element of that is for navigational RTK, EMI protection, yeah. um, the ability to get centimeter level accuracy in flight. And that is certainly valuable to companies like in the energy utility space for around high, uh, high voltage transmission systems, but also for companies, let's say, for example, that are doing ILS instrumentation, glide slope measurements for that FAA, uh, kind of applications that require extremely precise positioning and repeatability of missions. Um, so navigational RTK, um, the ability for the drone to hold its station at the one centimeter level, uh, super, super valuable. And then kind of from there, uh, the next element is uh, introducing an RTK and or PPK workflow that is actually, if you're using RTK, automatically injecting yeah. your RTK corrections directly into the image or enabling a PPK workflow where you can bring those one centimeter yeah. accuracy uh, capabilities into the collected imagery. And you had mentioned to me a little earlier that you are or have already developed your own base station that is going to be working with both of the models. Yes, yeah, no, we have. Um, and it, it's really important for Inspire Flight at this stage in our journey to kind of control the ecosystem and make sure we're delivering a solution to the customer that we can support for years to come. Um, so there's absolutely a world where we'll open up that ecosystem to be compatible with other manufacturers of base, uh, base stations out there. But yeah, exactly, exactly right. What we're launching is a solution that is designed to be used with the Inspire Flight drones and kind of built for our specific ecosystem. That's outstanding. And then the last bit of, I want to show you something here, is that I was, I was kind of not expecting this right here, but I'll let Adam, I'll let you talk about sure. the new remote that has not been released as of yet, but I, I can guarantee you I will be getting one of the very first ones in here. <laughs> you will. That's for sure. Yeah, so this is our new Atlas uh, controller. Uh, we've been, for the past couple of years, Inspired Flight's been looking and testing almost every controller on the market to kind of bring some diversity yeah. to our product offerings, more screen real estate, brighter screen, uh, overall better user experience, and of course playing into the blue UAS uh, kind of market. Um, and we've been really, really happy with this uh, controller over in our testing over the past few years um, and really expecting to start shipping this uh, on production units towards the end of the quarter. We've got some initial kind of one-off units, yeah. test units out in the market right now, getting more and more feedback. Uh, but really excited about this offering, and at the end of the day, all it does is bring additional diversity and capability to our product line. Uh, you, that, I'll tell you what I like the most about it is how ergonomical this is, and it, it just, as far as being able to, it fits this in your palm of your hands perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's very balanced. It feels very natural to be able to fly something like this. And that seven inch screen right here, I mean, that's, you're not gonna find anything better in the entire world than a seven inch screen that's that, of this quality right here. And we're gonna give you definitely more on this uh, in our product review video here. Yeah. And we all, you know, we got, uh, the VO sensor as well, we're going to be testing that. Again, mapping solutions right now, we haven't even really even touched sure. approach upon the mapping solutions that we have and on that's here. That's really what I'm actually, one of the things I'm most excited about. Because yeah. especially with the I-1200A up until this launch, the geospatial mapping industry, construction, anything kind of adjacent to that world, that's been really the crux of our business, yeah. um, especially for LiDAR, uh, in mapping cameras, photogrammetry, things of that nature. It's such a evolving industry, um, and it's an evolving landscape, and some of the capabilities and new sensor technologies that are coming out on the market are just really exciting. Like, the one that you've got there to your left, uh, here, I'll, yeah, if you can there hold you that go. up. That's the one I'm honestly most excited about today. It's, uh, it's called the Sentara 65R. Uh, Sentara is a US company based in Minnesota. Uh, this is a 65 megapixel global shutter sensor at a cost that is, almost a tenth of some of the other global shutter, high precision uh, cameras out on the market. Extremely lightweight package. It's very light. Yeah, three uh, three photos per second. So the efficiency and width that you can realize in the GSD, the ground sampling distance that you can still get using this camera while flying at incredibly high altitudes, incredibly fast. Just the value of that to the end user is enormous, the efficiency that you can create. So I'm really excited about this camera. Uh, we also have the 6X, which is the multi-spectral uh, camera from the same company, Sentara. Yeah. And what I love is all these cameras are plug-and-play and field swappable. I, yeah, they're very easy to go in and out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, let's see if I, if I can do it on camera. 
that's how that really shows you how easy it is, right? It's back here. There we go. Super easy. Slide yep. that out. And you can do this field swappable, just like our batteries on this system. Everything is uh, field swappable, hot swappable. And just like that, you're up with the new camera. And with our new inspired ground control software, one of the other beauties is the system's actually recognizing what camera is on the system. So the user interface, because uh, the user interface and kind of the buttons that you need to access are different if you're using a thermal camera designed for inspection compared to an RGB camera for mapping. Those are different user experiences. So the system is automatically adjusting to those on the fly. Mm -hmm. And that really just leads to what our goal is to provide a scalable solution to the enterprise. Yeah, and then, you know, this is just the, the scratch of things. I mean. I, I'm totally blown away that you've been able to go from concept to production in 18 months. Yeah. I mean, I hope that everybody can appreciate how mind-blowing that is, especially when we've been seeing other uh, companies come out in the past and not been able to provide anything of close of, of substance to this. So it's a, it's really well, a really, tribute to what you guys are doing. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And certainly the credit is not on me. That we've had an incredible engineering team out of our San Luis Obispo headquarters and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears going into this product. I can tell you that. But really yeah. proud moment for Inspire Flight to start shipping these, getting it on the market. And honestly, the most exciting part is starting to get feedback from folks like you that are the true subject matter experts um, in the field and really have a firm understanding of what the end user is doing. Yeah, so what we're gonna do now is, perfect timing here, the folks at Inspire Flight got a brand new payload sensor for their 1200. So we're gonna go ahead and go over there and talk about that next. So Adam, what do we got here? This is, this looks like a, a little overwhelming. Yeah, this is, a, this is a brand new integration for the IF-1200. So the IF-1200's been, over the past few years, really leading up to the launch of the IF-800 Tomcat. It's been our flagship system. There's uh, We're about to get, we've got about 450 systems, uh, IF-1200's out in the wild, uh, yeah. serving critical infrastructure, government, defense applications all over the country. This is, an, uh, this is an integration I'm really, really excited about. So we've partnered with a company uh, called Drone Amplified, uh, fairly well known in the industry. Uh, this, uh, the device you're looking here, the payload you're looking here, is for aerial ignition. Um, so taking uh, kind of an aerial ignition capability for prescribed burns, lighting backfires, applications that the U.S. Forest Service, uh, state fire departments around the country uh, use for prescribed burns, forest, forestry health, protection from wildfires, yeah. uh, wildfire containment. Uh, so what this system does, it has these, I'm not going to be able to reach in and grab one, it's got these little spheres in there, these ignition spheres filled with a chemical. They get injected with propylene glycol on the way out of this hopper, and then about 10 seconds later, as they hit the ground, they actually burst into flame. So when you think of wildfire containment, um, and this was news to me, when I got educated on this, I was the the guy not educated on the space thinking, oh, you use water, right, to, mm -hmm. put it, to contain wildfires. Not true at all. What you do is you actually kind of you burn a ring around a wildfire, so you eliminate the fuel source. So when the wildfire spreads to that ring that you burned, it has nowhere else to go. Um, so they've been using, it's called P the PSD. So this air ignition capability has been used in helicopters for years and years and years. Um, but what's really, really exciting is the, the profiles of those, the, the flight profiles that those helicopters have to fly in to do that application, low and slow, are incredibly dangerous uh, flight profiles. Yeah. So, if we can accomplish the same thing with the drone, and that's the whole purpose really of Inspired Flight and many of the folks in this room, taking people out of harm's way. So we can uh, we can deliver incredibly cost-efficient, effective, life-saving techniques uh, through partnerships and integrations with folks like Drone Amplified. So this system is called the Ignis uh, from Drone Amplified, now available on the i 1200 and this was actually great timing. Yeah. Uh, the yes. press release really just went live today um, on this new partnership and integration, and. We're really excited to bring it to market and deliver more life-saving tools. Well, you know what? I mean, introducing this right now here in California, yeah. when, I mean, it becomes, I think in September, mm -hmm. becomes, that's the fire season, you know? Absolutely. Then that's, I mean, and it goes for months on end. So that's, I mean, something like this, is could be a very valuable tool for the public safety in the state. No, I agree. I, I grew up here in San Diego. 
three or four times throughout my life, I've had to evacuate my house for weeks on end. I've yeah. had multiple, multiple uh, close friends and family members that have lost their house due to wildfires. So it's an application that's just incredibly meaningful to me. Um, and I think one that's incredibly meaningful to Inspire Flight and we're excited, really excited to bring it to market. Great, and then also we're gonna be going ahead and doing a review video also on the 1202. We're not going to be using this, but we will be using, uh, we're going to be in, in, introducing this as well into, because you do have the RTK system for this as well. We, we do. will be doing a little that, bit of testing there. That's one of the beauties of kind of both of our aircraft is the flight stacks, the user experiences, the controller, how you get trained on the system are effectively the same. Really the only difference between the aircraft is one's bigger than the other. But once that drone is flying away, whether you're using an IF-800 or an IF-1200, that yeah. training applies to both aircraft. You want to uh, show our audience how big those batteries are? <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty crazy. The system actually uses two of them at once. It's a yeah. car, it's a it's a it's a car battery. Yeah, it I is. mean, what what's incredible to me is thinking like, think about how much power two of these hold, and this system is moving through that power in. 40 minutes of flight time. Yeah. It's just absolutely incredible the complexity of the electronics that go into tools like this to be able to handle that level of power. Um, I flew this at our demo day, and I think I was the only one like putting it in full. I was going full stick with it. And oh, it, yeah. it managed and it really flew super smooth yeah, and well. She gets up and moving. This uh, system was actually originally designed for an Air Force application, yeah. uh, kind of around the time when uh, the Department of Defense grounded the M600. Uh, we won a contract to, de to develop and deliver a direct replacement for the M600. And after certainly some iterations, we've ended up with the IF-1200. Most flight time you'll find on a heavy lift hexaco a heavy lift drone in the industry while remaining under 55 pounds. We have 19 pounds of payload capacity. Yeah. She can fly it up to 50 miles per hour. And I bet quite a bit of money you're not gonna find a more stable platform in the market. I, I've flown a lot of heavy lifter drones. We used yeah. to build our own. With our, we're nothing ready to fly drones. And then sure. go to different oh, variations of different steps through the years. and. I can tell you, there's nothing like this on the market. No, I appreciate it. And if you look at the drone that's right next to you, so that's also an IF-1200. This system with this special uh, require, special integration requires longer landing gear. But this is our more standard IF-1200 configuration. That's why you see folks and integrator integration partners like Regal building some of the most expensive and precise uh, LiDAR tools in the industry. That's why you see them choosing the IF-1200. Yes. The lack of noise, lack of vibration going through the system, the stability it brings, and at the end of the day, the confidence it inspires to operators. Well, this is all great stuff, Adam. Thank you so much. We're really excited to start really going ahead and doing a lot of great stuff and testing and offering training and sales and support with all the different Inspire Flight products as well. We're really excited to get going. And I hope you have a great rest of the show. And yeah. thanks again for all your time. Yeah, thank you as well. And thanks for being an incredible partner and looking forward to more. Thanks, man. All right.